That's great. And we have the small Walter filter. We misname it the family filter because it'll do a lot more than a family. It'll do about 60 people. We've had 100 people plus. It does one and a half litres a minute. And then we have the community filter, which is mainly for schools and clinics. Now, um, how does it work? Well, you can see here, it's a well-known technology, ultrafiltration, hollow fibres, working inside out. So you can see here, if I can speak through the microphone at the same time, it's cross-flow. We have a pump, you need pressure for ultrafiltration, the water goes up the tubes, then there's an air pocket here, when you release the pump it goes down again. So we have continuous cross-flow. Then, so the surfaces are kept clean. But then you'll say, well, one of these days, the actual pores will clog up. Yep, they will. So we have, by turning stoppers or taps, we have <coughs> a built-in back flush. So we back flush it, which opens the pores again, et cetera, et cetera. And then, of course, we drain it by this one here. So moving on from there, if I do it the right way around, um, I need to say this, you all know it better than I do. <laughs> and we're saying part of the solution is point of use water treatment. And part of that solution is our filters. Moving on from there, and where are they actually used? When is the solution correct for using filters? So we give examples of what we've done. Um, in Kenya, the slum area with piped water. And when I was told about it, I says, why do you need a filter? You've got piped water. Then I had a look at the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not safe to drink. So they buy the water from a kiosk, and when they buy it, they see on the right-hand side, they have one of our filters just outside the kiosk, <coughs> and they pour the water in, they pump it, and take the water home, and it's fit to drink. Then... Um, when the borehole is broken. Has anyone seen a broken borehole anywhere in Africa? <laughs> um, this one here, on the right-hand side, is close to my heart because we, well, that was about six years ago, and with Rotary, I was helping distribute aid. And we just started on filters and an early prototype I had with me. We didn't arrive to this school till it was dark, and in the dark, I put it there, showed it to the people, showed it to the teachers, Muslim school, and a few days later, when I got home, I got an email saying, 500 people, 500 pupils are now drinking safe water. So I thought, we better do something about this, so I, I carried on. And the one on the left was um, one which was a solar pump. The, the drive had gone on the solar pump, the, the village had to, the school and village had to collect the money, which we were told was three thousand pounds for a new drive. So they they got on a, they got on they filled a taxi up, got on to see us. We, we were having a little holiday on the coast, and we provided them with a community filter. So that in the meantime, while they were spending years trying to raise the money to get the pump right, the children still had clean water. Now then, it's used, obviously, in emergencies. Small emergencies on the left, that was in Gambia, a slum area where heavy rain and all the open wells, of course, get the water goes in and they're all contaminated. So that's an ideal place. That, that one on the left is, I don't get any decent photographs, that's in Aleppo in Syria, where the, um, obviously the public water supply wasn't using. They've shown damaged tanks from airstrikes in the middle of a civil war and they were getting raw water from the Euphrates, and typhoid was endemic, with both people living there and outside. And there's a charity of Syrians who are, they call them Syrian diaspora, living in the UK, collect money, and we sent out two containers with filters. Um, they, we did communities and family ones. They preferred the family ones because they said that the community ones attract people, and big crowds, attract a tap from the air. <laughs> so they keep it quiet and use the small filters. Then in schools, we've gone schools are a big thing here. Again, a school on the left. I had to keep all the kids away so we could see the filter. <laughs> and th then on the right, um, in Kenya, you can get, you can buy very cheaply these uh, jerry cans with taps. 
So they use a community filter, fill them up, and then at break time, they can just turn the tap on, have as many as they like around the place in the field or the classroom, and they get safe water. And then water from lakes. This is Lake Victoria, and you see them with the family filter there. It's familiar, isn't it? Cows washing, collect the water from just that particular point, and they need the filters. And they're actually, we keep, we, we keep improving the filters. We had s one or two got broken by damage and other reason, and I found that they'd mended them because they'd found super glue in the shop down the road. <laughs> and so they clearly valued them because they take a lot of trouble to get them right. And clinics. Now, this is a, a clinic in uh, Rwanda, and squeaky clean. You see by the floor, and, and they took our community filter out of a cupboard. And I thought, were well, these guys really using this filter? <laughs> uh, and they demonstrated it. But then the next day, we went to an outreach clinic that was down a rough road, and there was a bottle of water. And they said, oh, yeah, where did you get that from? Oh, well, every day it gets delivered from, by the aquafilter from the main clinic. And they go around doing it, supplying it to the outreach clinic. So that's proof that it actually works. Now, um, yep, I was really pleased about that. Um, I hadn't heard about that since we delivered it. But you can see it's an early one, machine top and bottom a prototype, one of the very first batch before we had the courage to get mouldings for it. And you see the water in there, and it's in the clinic by Lake Victoria. And, and I tried it out, and it was still working fine. No spare parts. Um, the guy knew how to look after it. They don't do it all of them, but that was it. Then, next one here, holes in the ground. You're all familiar with these. The village, it was in about 15 minutes of uh, Cape Town. I, I didn't think, I thought they had water around there. But we, we went on a rough ride to a village near here. You can see the houses, the people, the community filter, and that's where they got the water. <laughs> Amazing, you hear all these programs, and it's very rarely you see anything happening, actually. And open, open wells, I know, I know you can cap them and put a pump on, but an awful lot of open wells, they're always fine. When we test them, they're always fine in the, dry, in the dry season, and they're always bad in the rainy season. So again, you see the filter being used. The family filter, as you can see, they get a bucket or a cut down jerry can, they all have them, and you just clamp it onto the wall, put it in, clamp it onto the wall, and pump. And you've got your safe water. And I haven't yet, although they're generally given, I haven't yet met any resistance to the use. I find that when you have a filter where the water coming in looks like it's in a bucket, and they pump and it comes out, and they look, we just drink it, they look very carefully. And then after a few minutes looking, a smile comes, <laughs> and the water looks clean, and no problem. <laughs> Everybody wants it. Uh, that's a dry area. And you see natural ponds develop in the rainy season, and they just dip the water in and clean it. And that's the community filter there with the cows and everything else. Um, solutions, I won't bother with that. Uh, I, I mean, I estimated the figures myself. Lots of ways, you know, boiling, chlorine, this, that, and the other. Def definitely consider the membrane as part of your list. Um, I, I gave it the highest rating. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm sure it was impartial, but here we are. And now, marketing. Um, this is a whole new area that I haven't got time. After the, we, we, we could, uh, we've had discussions before and really good um, discussions. That's, uh, I mean, if anything, the technology is easy. The difficult thing is really finding a way. We have desperately poor people, especially the bottom billion. These are the ones we should concentrate on. They cannot afford to themselves, resource for safe water. Um, I've got this picture, which, which I've mentioned two or three times, of, you know, <laughs> it's almost a comedy act. Uh, I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll be able to just buy a mobile phone, and then some well-meaning person says, come and buy a, a solar cell so you can read in the evening. Great. Come and buy a mosquito net. Great. Wonderful. Come and buy a solar cooker. Come and buy... <laughs> uh, what's next on the list? Um, there's about five things. They can't do it, so we have to find a way of donors getting without cost to the right people 
who are really poor. We'll do that later. Fine. Um, but that's a really big issue. And I know all this sustainability and all the rest of it, but it's always subsidised. I mean, everything I've seen that works is. And, and, and then that's another illustration of the problem. You all know it. The people who need them can't afford them <laughs> in a developing country. Then there's a level above, the taxi drivers, the people in low wages who can afford them. But if you're a charity, is that a charitable activity? To what extent? Because when you go up the ladder, there's people who <laughs> definitely afford them. And then, of course, the ones at the top, you, you try and tap for uh, donations <laughs> to the ones at the bottom. But that, that, that's a problem in a nutshell, but it's a much more complicated problem. How's my time going, by the way? Oh, fine, thank you. Oh, I've got time to spare. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't have to use it. I, I realise that. <laughs> I wondered what you were waving for. Five minutes. <laughs> um, that's how we began. Um, I, I'm in the local Rotary Club, and a local company were making that horror in a, an aluminium box. And it wasn't working very well, and it was big and badly engineered, and, and I was asked to help for a few days with the engineering. And a few months after that, I thought, well, how interesting. Um, the company went into liquidation. So then I either had to do nothing, and I knew nothing about water, or, or have a, a nice interest in my pending retirement. So. Uh, <laughs> I've got that. And, and obviously I've learned. David, your turn. <laughs> okay, so I guess I've got three minutes. I, I don't need three minutes, to be honest. Though, so, uh, I, I, to start with, uh, uh, John asked me to, to show a case study, so that's why I'm here. Uh, and I've got to apologize because it's a case study that we've developed with uh, ACTED, the French NGOs, well known French NGOs, for WEDEC. So you can see WEDEC. Uh, they are still written. I should have changed the logo. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so in, in ACTED has distributed uh, in the Middle East some filters, some family filters, actually, and uh, twice in Iraq, in the north part of Iraq. And um, this is what the case study is about. And, and it's a very interesting one because, uh, as John has uh, mentioned, we shouldn't have called the filters the family filters because it's used by 59 people living together in, a, in the same shelter. That's uh, internally displaced people. They've, they've got no uh, other possibility. They've got to share, and they do. And they, they've been sharing those filters, I mean, the one filters among 59 people for uh, about probably six to seven months now. And it seems that it, it works pre pretty well. Um, so, uh, of course, it, it, it's not magical. What we are doing is, uh, is not magical. Shall I press enter? Yeah, which one? Down. Down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I'm I'm trying to when I'm I'm working with the NG, uh, NGOs I'm trying to get their feedback because this is essential for us to in order to improve the product and to see whether um, uh, the final users are happy with what what we deliver. And uh, this is an example of of uh, of uh, I mean uh, of an exchange we had with uh, Acted. So. Uh, uh, of, of course, I erased most of the of the email, which is uh, uh, probably not appropriate for for you. Especially, this is our Swiss account number uh, where they transfer the money. Um, no, uh, more seriously, uh, I've asked them what they thought about the the filters. I've asked their, their team in the field what they thought about the filters, and they came with with this response. So they say that the advantages that you maybe you can't read, so I, re I will read for you. It's uh, good for treating the muddiness water. So I'm reading what it's written. Uh, easy to use for IDPs and uh, uh, physical operation, no needs of electric electricity power. And uh, the disadvantages, they, they are uh, pointing to disadvantages. Uh, and they came as no surprise for us because they say that it's not treating salty water. So, I mean, that's something we knew from the beginning. It's ultra filtration. We can't uh, uh, treat salty water. And also they say that it doesn't include uh, 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 cartridge, additional cartridge. But that comes without surprise for, for us because John has designed the filters for using no new cartridges. So this is what I wanted to share with you, uh, feedback from Bacted. <laughs> 